Hey everybody, Eagle Run 23 here. Out in the shop trying to get a couple things organized. I thought I would show you a project that has not been out here for a while. Uh, but first, we need to talk about RCBS. Got an RCBS hat on here. They have come on board. Uh, they wanna get involved on a couple of our reloading projects. Really cool stuff. I'm gonna do a little bit more info on this, but they sent the six millimeter arc, and this one has the Matchmaster seating die, so you can kind of dial it in, get it exactly how you want it, but big shout out to RCBS. More about them down below. So since I last uploaded, uh, we have gained 5,000 new subscribers, and it's been a couple of weeks now since that upload, uh, so impressive to see uh, so many new subscribers. So welcome to you here. Many of you that are new have never seen this gun, and then any of you that have joined in the last couple of years have not seen this gun. This is a really beautiful SLR Rifle Works upper, handguard, and lower. That billeted lower is just really stinking cool. Of course, we're running a die-free company grip on there and a CMC trigger. Now, this barrel is a Faxon Match Series, 8-inch, and we're running the OG Dead Air Primal for the can. Uh, up on top here, an optic that many of you have not heard of, but if you've been around me for a while, definitely heard me talking about Tracked. I love Tracked. Got three or four of them on a lot of our high-end stuff and really like those scopes. I pulled it out a couple of weeks ago from the back of the safe to, um, to shoot it because I needed to test some ammo in it. There's a new controlled fracturing that uh, Howworks Ballistics just put out. Came out about a week ago. It's flying off the shelves. Uh, channel name saves you money over there. But I need to test that round in an 8-inch barrel. And we did that a couple of weeks ago and it went really well. Now I had a different scope on it then. I went ahead and put the tract on it for this because uh, we're doing some DNT thermal things. We have a DNT Hydra that came in a couple of weeks ago and I haven't taken it on a hunt yet, but I have used it uh, just around the yard and it's pretty darn good. So I'm hoping that this, and I haven't even tried this yet, I'm hoping that we have good enough alignment that we can run this mount with this optic with the clip-on Hydra. That Hydra can be used as a standalone. It's got a reticle in it, but if you want to run it as a clip-on, uh, which is what I'm wanting to try, uh, you'll need to do a low power scope. Uh, LPVOs work really good. So while I was testing that, that round, I tested it in my Q-Fix, I tested it in this, I actually hunted it a couple of nights and went really well. The biggest thing that came out of that, and this video was up a couple of weeks ago, was the BC on this new 300 grain. We've been trying to do these 350s and even heavier stuff. This thing must have a really high BC because it did not drop as much as I was expecting. And that actually caused me to miss a pig uh, one of those nights that I was out there. Uh, I, I don't have data yet on the BC for these. These were a prototype when I was testing it. Now they're actually in production. So hopefully we can get some actual BC numbers so we can kind of fill out our ballistic tables and kind of know a little bit more about our drop. But the fact that it's not dropping as much means a little flatter shooting, a little easier to shoot. 150, 160, 200 yards to get those pigs. Um, I even shot it at a coyote a couple weeks ago as well. All right, editor Eagle Run 23 here. I gotta jump in here to see if we can make some sense of this. While the BC number is still a bit of a mystery, uh, a couple of things that could have happened. One, I took one shot. So one shot is not real data. That could explain uh, a little bit here, I could have been off on my shot. I, I could have, I was shooting off a tripod, so it's possible that I flinched a little bit. It seemed like a good shot when I pulled the trigger, but ballistically speaking, it doesn't make sense. I was showing that I held just at the top edge of that plate and then the round impacted about four inches later. I wish I had a tape measure. I did not have a tape measure. I don't even know that exact amount of drop. If you punch in a similar BC from another bullet and you look at what it should have dropped, uh, it should have dropped about twice that much. It's possible that there's also something going on with my optic. I use the AIM 101 from Shinex. I've taken a lot of animals with it. I use it all the time. Possible something is wrong there. That could explain a little bit of the differences. I did shoot a nice tight um, 
a group over on the steel target. I also shot several groups on paper that day. Most of them were just right around one MOA. But shooting off the tripod and things like that, it's possible that I just kind of moved or something. I don't know. It doesn't make sense ballistically. While we were out there, we had the owner of Howworks Ballistics and he shot 436 yards with this round. Calculating those impacts also don't make sense. Where he was hitting on the gong, there's like an 18 or 20 inch gong. He was hitting a little bit low. It doesn't make sense um, ballistically. So maybe the BC on this is crazy high. Maybe it's only a 0.42 or a 0.440. Um, unclear exactly what that BC is, but we're gonna keep working on it. This also brings up the point that we need to test a little bit better. That I just simply need to do a better job of testing so that I'm showing as much data as possible to you guys. Right now we have plans to recreate all of this. We'll use a big sheet of butcher paper or a big sheet of plywood so we can show you what the drops are at different distances. All of that said, I'm standing by the part of this where this is the most accurate hunting round. I am definitely recommending this as the best round on the market right now. Hopefully it's challenged and we get better and better accuracy. I love the competition uh, that we're seeing. 8.6 is doing some crazy cool things in our bullet performance. Ballistic coefficient is an important factor and sometimes we don't really pay much attention to it, but that's what causes it to have low drag, uh, stay in the air a little bit longer. And in our case, when we're shooting really heavy fat bullets, uh, keeps it up a little bit longer, uh, making our shots a little bit easier. More data on this coming out. Uh, it's it's already shipping. Some of you already have some of it. I've heard from you. Uh, I don't know that anyone's hunted it yet, but I've heard that it's showing up. And so uh, be sure to check that out. If you're looking for a more accurate, because the accuracy of this thing's crazy, a more accurate, higher BC, but, but still a six blackout subsonic. Uh, really cool the way that this has all been progressing over the last couple of years. While we're here and we got this out, let's go over real quick. If you want to shoot a big subsonic heavy bullet, uh, the 8.6 Blackout is a great choice. We've figured out a lot of things over the last couple of years. Uh, we've been in some, we've had some highs and we've had some lows, but we've been in a really good place here recently. Uh, late last year, we had some really good bullets coming out from Maker. Uh, new bullet coming out from a different company here, but Maker's still working on stuff. If you watch my shorts and my Instagram, you'll see some of that prototype stuff as it comes out because uh, I get to test some of it, which is kind of cool. Anyways, I felt like this SLR build needed a little bit more love. I wanted to show it off to some of you. Uh, you're going to see it in a couple of videos here coming up uh, as we test the very cool DNT Hydra. I also have some thermal reviews coming through uh, for Teslong. More thermal stuff coming. These are some prototypes from Teslong. Really cool stuff. These will be out very soon. I have a full review coming on those. We've got some really nice thermal things on the market. It was one of the things I knew would be big in 2025. Suppressors and thermals, if you don't have one, I have links for everything down below. The build list on how I built this gun, how much it cost, all the components and links are available over on eaglerun23.com. If you click the blog, that's where all the build lists and everything are for every project that we've done, at least in the last couple of years. All right, I got lots to do. Gotta get back to work. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time. Okay, so out of that five, 